open your Bible with me to Genesis 27. That was where we ended last time. I hope you are studying the word alongside. I hope you are doing that. There is an evil day coming. One day, we will just join in and I'll begin to mention your names to answer questions. It will be your evil day. If you couldn't answer it, we brought you. We will remove you. I will unfriend you on every social media. Wouldn't even like to hear your name, you know, again. So it will be a very bad day for you. So steady along, steady along. I have some questions here, two questions. As somebody said, in these days of coronavirus and all the things happening around the world, Pastor, what is your advice? What do we do as children of God? The answer is very simple. Minimize the amount of news you listen to and the things you read about the reports from around the world. What is happening now is, you know, people have built a lot of websites and they want people to go there to read from their websites. When you open their websites, they make more money. So they need people to read from there. So what they do is when issues come out like this, they find uh, a very enticing title and they'll write some funny articles, things that are not true. They'll write those things and publish it so that it will entice people to go there to read from their websites. So most of those things are not true. They will, pub they will create you know, headlines that will create fear and panic in people. So that is what is, is, is happening. So don't give attention to those things. There is corona around, they've given you measures you should take to prevent yourself from getting it. Just follow those measures. No need to go and be looking at statistics, how many people have got it and how many people healed. Some of you have it on your, on your, on your screen. You know, every update, you, you need to get it. You are destroying yourself. You are creating fear and panic in your heart. Very soon, Satan will get in because those are the tools of Satan. Before he can get to a place, the first thing he introduces is fear. When your heart is saturated by fear, then he gets in and he will destroy you. So that is how it is. Panic all around the world uh, for, for this. And I always tell you, this is not it. You are going to hear of massive destructive you know, happenings, more than this. This is just introduction to the subject. So prepare, prepare for it. This is the time where you don't take your attention off the word of God. Keep looking, all right? You are going to hear voices from behind. Don't stand back, don't look back. You are going to hear voices calling you from sideways, left and right. Don't stand your neck. Keep looking, focus, stay very focused to the word. Just follow what the word says and you have a glorious life. All right, I hope that helped. That helped you. So we, now we've gone all the way to 27. I don't think there is a need for me to narrate from Genesis 1 again up to 27. So I'll just speak from Genesis 12. All right. We started studying this book, this wonderful book. And uh, Genesis 12, God appeared to Abraham chose Abraham by his own sovereign power. Abraham didn't do anything. God just chose him by his own will. And uh, he decided to bless him and make him a great man. And through Abraham, he was going to extend his blessing to the rest of the world. So he started a journey with Abraham. Genesis 15, God entered, he officialized it by going into covenant with Abraham. And I told you that the covenant has to do with the seed of Abraham, how the children of Abraham uh, are going to fill the earth, are going to be found everywhere, and how God was going to give him the land on which he was at that time. Those are the two main things. God entered into covenant with, with Abraham. So 
uh, Genesis 17, God expound on this, what exactly is going to happen. And for the, um, for the, you know, covenant he made with him to come to pass. And we saw the life of Abraham, you know, till chapter 25, we studied the life of Abraham, the mistakes Abraham made and, uh, and the strength of Abraham. Even though we didn't point out many strengths of Abraham, but Abraham was a prophet. He was a man of the spirit, you know, but he realized some of these things at the later days of his life. And uh, it's something we should learn. It shouldn't be like that with us. And these things we are studying, they are lessons for life. It's not really about Abraham. The story of Abraham, you know, there are some stories that God recorded for us in the Bible. That story is enough to encapsulate all of man's problems. When Abraham was alive, there were many people who were alive at that time. And they were involved in many activities that God could record for us. But he specifically chose the story of this man, Abraham, for us. That means their mistakes are something that will be very destructive to us in these days if we will do the same thing. That means their strength will be helpful for us in these days if we will put it to work. You see, so it, it, there are stories which has the extremes. It will bring you massive blessing, same way it will, it will bring you massive distraction. So God recorded these things for us to learn from. So we saw how Abraham, you know, mis not misunderstood the, the, the promise of God, but he was not really getting it. Even though God showed him, you know, God, God gave him the opportunity to look at his children and he was able to look at the whole world. He saw the whole world and God willed it to him. That was what is recorded for us, even in the New Testament, that Abraham was a man of faith, the father of faith. That was the only thing. But the rest, look at the rest of Abraham's life. It looks like some form of unbelief there. It looks like some form of he, he was just not going to fully trust God. Even though he received the message of God, he would still do things some other ways. You know, those, those up and downs. But the most important part is how Abraham's life put God's promise in his life in danger. You see, so if you study the life of from Genesis 12 to Genesis 15, two things you are going to see, man's unfaithfulness against God's faithfulness. Those are the two things you see. Man's unfaithfulness against God's faithfulness. So these children of Abraham, from Abraham himself up to to the child, all his children, they kept making this repeated mistake, the same repeated mistake. And these mistakes put God's uh, promise he made to their father in danger. Right. You see, then this is also yeah, one thing you have me. to know. God <laughs> dealing with from Isaac, uh, Jacob, and uh, God, all the tribe children of, uh, the, all the 12, tribes of or the 12 children of, of Jacob, they are as a result of their father, their grandfather, Abraham. God blessed them not because of their dealing with him. God blessed them because of Abraham. At the end of Abraham's life, God made a statement that because he walked with him, he was faithful with him, he will bless him. But the man was already dying. So he extended his blessing to his children for his faithfulness. And I think by now you understand that principle. Imputed righteousness, imputed blessing, where you enjoy somebody's blessing. You didn't do anything. That time, even if you do something wrong, God is not going to count it against you because it's not about you. It is about whoever responsible for the blessing. And it's the same thing we receive from Christ. You see, we don't need to do anything to, to deserve the, the things we enjoy. It's about Christ. You see, Christ's work has been imputed to us. So we, all we need to do is to enjoy it. Praise the Lord. So we, we saw the life of Abraham, the up and downs, till he died. 
before he died, he made a, a very remarkable um, uh, oath. He took an oath with his servants to put his house in order. And we look at the house, the, the life of Ishmael, how Ishmael went to marry, and his marriage just took him out of the scope. You see, you see, let me tell you something, especially as, as ladies and even guys, your choice of partner is very important. I think it's one of the reasons why all this men's seminar, women's seminar is coming alongside with the Torah we are studying. It just occurred to me this morning. Why is this thing coming alongside? It's, it's like these men's and something, something, same conferences are just walking alongside with the things we are studying. Ishmael just wrote himself off of God's everything by marriage. You see, already, you know, his mother was already a problem. He didn't come from the right mother. But that wouldn't create much problem like, uh, like the fact that he went to marry and God is not going to produce a seed from a Gentile. God is not going to produce a seed from a Gentile. So he is out of it. You will see the same repeated mistake in the life of Esau. He did the same thing. He did the same thing. And he also wrote himself off. So there are decisions you make and you just write yourself off. Certain things God wants to do with you, he cannot. He can't do it. So let's study the life of these guys. Abraham died, you know, but he was able to set Isaac on track before he died. He, he made sure Abraham married from the right family and uh, everything was all right. He died. So now we started looking at the life of Isaac. Isaac grew up, uh, was married to Rebecca, and uh, Genesis 27 gave us a very, very important message for life. Actually, Genesis 27, all uh, that chapter, that's this chapter 27, I can preach with this every verse, three services with every verse. It has a lot we have to learn from here. We have a lot we have to learn from here. This simple story, but it has a lot we have to learn from here. So because of time, I'll just point out a few things to you. So Isaac grew up, the, the wife is pregnant now with twins. And uh, we are told that the children struggle within her. And uh, last time we read that she went to ask of an old woman in the village. Is that what we read? As to what is happening to her. Is that what we read? Yes. No, she went to inquire of the Lord to find out what is happening. And you should learn it. All right, you should learn it. When things are happening to you, you know, tend to the Lord. Tend to the Lord. Now, a lot of matured people, old, old people don't have wisdom. Most, most old people are more foolish than, than, than anything you can talk about. So they are not people you can take advice from, you know. Uh, so he inquired of the Lord and the Lord gave him something. The Lord told him that he has two nations in her womb. And uh, I won't explain those things to you. These things represent group of people. He's not talking about nation America and nation China. It represents two groups of people where one will be weak and one will be strong. So you, if you take any two group of people, you are going to find Esau and you are going to find Jacob. One being weak, one being strong. One mindful of spiritual things, one mindful of carnal things. You see, one despising their destiny, other be, others being mindful of their destiny. If you take nations, you will see the same thing. Take na a continent like, if you take continents, you will see the same thing. Take continents like Africa against any other continent. You will see Jacob, you will see Esau. You see, how Africans are not mindful of the resources they have. They don't care. They were like, do you need? Yes, come and dig it away and give us anything you want. So they don't really care about it. But like it costs Esau later in the future. It's going to cost them, you know, much more, you know, trouble 
that they can ever imagine. They don't know what they are doing today. Same thing, maybe you are born from the same parents. There is definitely going to be Esau. There is definitely going to be Jacob. Children from the same parents, some mindful of spiritual things, others don't. Others don't care about anything. You see, Jacob, they are people who are spiritual. There are people who are mindful of spiritual things. Esau are people who are not mindful, who don't take spiritual things seriously. They are people who take spiritual things for granted. You see, if you read in the New Testament, in the, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews said, even though Esau wept bitterly, he sorted it with a bitter cry, there was no place of repentance for him. It's in the book of Hebrews, and he's referring to the same story, that even though he sorted his birthright with bitter cry, there was no place of repentance for him. That means, you know, there is no way people of people like Esau are going to be successful in life. No matter how much they struggle, they are not going to make it. So now he, finally, these children came into the scene. And for whatever reason we don't know, daddy tends to love Esau and mommy tends to love Jacob. That is the first failure of Isaac. Isaac's problem was family failure. It started like this. Wifey went to inquire of the Lord. We can't really tell whether she told daddy or not. But it looks like she didn't tell daddy. So she kept the information to herself, gave birth, and we are told that Isaac loved Esau because he was a hunter. Because of bush meat. You see, because of bush meat, he loved Esau. And sometimes women are naturally like that. Now that daddy loved Esau, then automatically I should love the other one. You see, women are like that. Now that daddy loved this one, then automatically let me go for the other one. So favoritism has also set in another problem. And the lesson of favoritism is, is, is what you will learn from this Genesis 27. And the effect of, of it and the effect of it. So the children came into, seeing, into the scene. One became a, a, a farmer, animal farmer in the house, and the other is a hunter who hunts in the bush. One day we are told that Esau came back home and requested a meal from Jacob. And Jacob was like, before I give you this time, you need to swear your birthright to me. I was telling you last time, how did he know about the birthright? Mommy told, told him. Then that is another failure of Isaac. Isaac loved the elder one. He should have educated Esau about what birthright is. But he didn't. He should because he's the, el he's the older one and he is the one going to inherit the bed right. So daddy should have educated him. And interestingly, daddy is even on his side. So daddy should have educated him about what bed right is, the importance of it. Daddy didn't do it because daddy was only interested in the bush meat. So that is the only relationship that they had. Bush meat relationship. But when it comes to spiritual things, daddy was not going to bless the son with spiritual things. We see the same things in families today. Parents only interested in, 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 in their own, they, they, it's just about their own interests. They force the children to study certain courses because that is what they wanted to study, but they couldn't. So now their children must study it. That is selfishness. So by the end of the day, the child is educated, but that is daddy reproducing himself in the child. So this child is now an engineer and he's suffering in life because he just studied hard to make it for daddy, but he's not fulfilled. You see, he's not fulfilled. 
what he wanted to be. Instead of daddy guiding the child to become what he wanted to be, daddy said no. Daddy will now mold the child into what he wanted to be in life. I saw a post of somebody, he said, be the person you needed when you were young. And I'm like, that statement is not correct. Why? Why should you be the person that you needed when you were young? That is selfishness. You should now be the person that somebody needs. Not the person you needed when you, you were young. So now that you are the person that you needed when you were young, why is it going to benefit you? And then how is it going to benefit others? You just work hard to become the selfish interest you needed. But you see, when things like this, you read posts like this, if you don't take time to analyze it, you buy into it. And then that is how the media leads people to make mistakes. So now you see the whole of your life struggling to be the person you needed when you were young. Only to finally make it, you are now the person you needed when you were young. And you see that you are not of any use to anybody. Not even to yourself, because you don't need that person anymore. So you made it, but no fulfillment. So the best way to put such a statement is become the person that others need today. Become the person that others around you need today. So, daddy didn't educate the son, but mommy gave, taught Jacob about the birthright. Maybe just in their conversation, the child might have made a statement and mommy was like, no, you are not really going to be that prosperous like you, you thought. Or however prosperous you are going to be, your elder brother will surely be more prosperous than you you will be because he's entitled to the birthright. And maybe you don't know what birthright is. In Israel, among the Jews, there is a special blessing that the firstborn, usually the first maleborn, inherited from their father. That makes them prosperous without even doing anything. It's a blessing that they pass from one, father, one parent to the other. You know, so the firstborn is entitled to it. The firstborn is entitled to it. So uh, um, uh, every father will bless their children, their first newborn before they die. And when they do that, a blessing just comes into their life and things just start working for them. Things just start working for them. I think till today they still do it. They still do it. So it got to the time of this guy and uh, he made a mess of his own. Now, Jacob said, this time you swear to me your birthright before I give you. He was like, what is birthright? That is a proof that he don't know anything about it. He said, what is a birthright to me? What is a birthright to me? All right, you are now the older one. And I told you when he said that, Jacob didn't just automatically grow gray hairs to show that he's the elderly one now. His face didn't change to show that he's now the elderly one. Everything remained the same. Nothing changed. Nobody was there, but God was there. You see, that should tell you the power of words. You are going to see two effects that explain the power of words. One of them is this. He just said, all right, you have the bed right and give me food. Nothing shows that anything in the realm of the spirit, there was an exchange of bed right. Same way when you talk, there are statements you make today and things change positively or things change negatively in the realm of the spirit. There are statements you make and you have destroyed your life. Nothing is going to work for you again just a statement you made. So as a Christian, the Bible says our words are cutting, you know, it's a sword. And you have to be mindful of the words that you utter out. They were just ordinary words. 
he didn't give Jacob anything to drink or he didn't lay hands on him. He didn't say anything. That guy was hungry. What said, you take and give me food. The guy took it and he gave food. Look at what Jacob did. Jacob believed that he, he, is the, the, he has the bed right now. He believed. He went to tell mommy about it. Mommy knew about what happened between the children. The best thing mommy should have done was to inform daddy about it, that this is what happened between your children. So daddy will find a way, a proper way to address the issue. But since mommy was on Jacob's side, she kept quiet. I hope you are seeing their mistakes. Every aspect of the story is a mistake. So mommy kept quiet. The same thing we see in families today. When mommy connived with the children against their father. A young girl, she's just 17. She has started seeing a guy. Mommy know about it. She will keep quiet. She won't say anything. The girl will sneak out and sneak in. Mommy is aware. Sometimes mommy will even call, come back quickly. Your dad is coming home. And the guy will come home, clean the mouth as though nothing happened, and be looking at the father like Angel Augusto. And daddy has no idea. Even if anyhow, daddy found out about it, mommy will deny. That mommy will be like, never. Your daughter can never do that. Mommy will make daddy even feel like he has spoken, you know, an abomination. Then daddy will be like, all right, I believe you. You know, I trust you. Until the child will get pregnant. Then if daddy gets angry at mommy with this issue, it's enough to collapse the marriage, you know. We see it. How mommies will connive with their children. Support them in the evil things the children are doing. I can't remember when we were kids, we do something bad, dad will lock us inside. You'll be in, in, the, you'll be in the room the whole day. No food for you. Mommy will open the door gently, pass food to you. You eat, you clean your mouth, you give the bowl back, and then you sit there with the innocent face as though you've eaten nothing, you haven't eaten anything today. So the punishments daddy wanted the child to get, we never got it. We were not afraid to do the wrong thing because we, have an, we had an advocate who was always on our side. Mommy the righteous. <laughs> Mommy the righteous, right? Always on our side. If daddy is planning to beat us, mommy wakes up at dawn. Hey, hey, run away. Daddy is planning to beat you. Run away. Then we are vigilant. The moment daddy opened the door, we jumped through the window and we ran away. <laughs> that was what we were doing. Because we are informed. Any footstep, we are let. You touch the handle of the door, we are gone. Daddy comes in and the room is empty. So, you know, these things, you read it in the life of in this, this story, it tells you the end result. It's the same thing we see in families today. The same result. As a mother, as a father, you come together to raise your children. You don't favor your children. You, you don't go on the side of your, your, of your children against your partner. You don't do that. Both of you come together. You reason together. You decide the best for your children. If the child is wrong, give the necessary punishment. You see, give the necessary punishment. Support your husband, support your wife in the raising of the children. Don't have your own plan B. Don't have your own, your own ideas, which is against that of the, of the father. Usually, many children cannot approach their father. They have to go through the mother. So mommy has a way of saying it. And if daddy disagree, since mommy has a way of, of uh, uh, how do I put it? She will get upset. For the next one week, mommy is upset. Why? 
because daddy disagreed with the proposal she brought on behalf of her children. And daddy wants, don't want to see that frown face, so he has to agree to everything. The day they came, Rebecca was inside. She is aware that he is old now and anything can happen. So every morning, she will quickly wake up, go and sweep the house, then she will come inside, pretend to have been sweeping the room and cleaning, wiping the wardrobe, cleaning the television, you know, just get herself busy in the room. And she was listening. One day she was doing this and she overheard daddy telling Esau to prepare food for him. He wants to eat the usual bush meat so that his spirit can be stirred and he will bless him. Another failure of Isaac. Isaac is now a man of the spirit, but he has to be stirred by his senses. Why can't he just bless? Must he eat bush meat before he bless? You see, a man of the spirit, but his spirit always has to be stirred by his senses. He has to eat the way he, the food, the way he likes it, the food that has to be like that. And then after eating it, the Bible said they gave him the wine and he drank. And he was like, Ugh. he said, all right now, come, let me bless you. He's full. Now his stomach is full. He can bless now. Another failure. We have the same thing in Christians today. There are Christians who can't play unless there is a, a hill song song playing. They have to slot in a hill song or Domwen or whoever. You know, uh, some local song has to be playing. Kin Kinadoka music has to be playing. They, they, just, they just can't pray without a song playing. It's actually when I listen to hill song, I pray very well. You are Kana. You are kinda, you are just like Isaac. You are spiritual, you want to be spiritual, but you have to be stirred by your senses. You need something from outside in before you can be spiritual. You are kinda. There are people who can't pray unless they go to a mountain until they are on top. Even on the mountain, they have a particular place they have to stand. And they believe when they stand there, then God hears. That is carnality. Don't think it's nice, it's carnality. People doing quiet time, they have to get out of the house, go and sit in some bush and sit there like this. They are having quiet time. They are waiting for the Lord to talk. So he's just there like this. Until he will start finally dozing off. He will, he will come back. He's waiting for the Lord to talk. He finished, he checked the time. It's 7 a.m. The Lord hasn't said anything. He said, the Lord bless his holy word. Amen. Then he walk out. Is that quiet time? Quiet time doesn't mean the place should be quiet. You misunderstood the whole thing. Quiet time means you alone with the Lord. You should be able to hear God wherever you are. That is a spiritual man. You should be able to hear the Lord wherever you are. Even in a marketplace, you should hear him. You don't hear God with your ears. You hear God with your spirit. There is nothing noisy to the spirit except the noise it creates itself. Actually, there are people who are very quiet people, but very noisy inside. He's alone, his own spirit, very noisy. You tell him anything, he wouldn't hear, he wouldn't listen. He is a multitude inside. Very noisy. So even if God talks to such people, they don't hear. If you, you want to be at a quiet place before you hear God, that is, you, that, you are just saying you want to hear God with these ears. These ears cannot hear God. These ears hear God, you will melt. You don't know him then. You can't hear him that way. You have to hear him with your spirit. God is a spirit. All right? God is a spirit. One time God spoke to the children of Israel. And the Bible said they saw smoke tendering 
you know, lightning. And they were like, Moses, don't let him talk again. And the voice of the Lord was like many waters. Can you imagine? They didn't hear anything. What God said, none of them heard it. They heard a sound like that of many waters. Some of them saw lightning. Can you imagine the voice producing a sight? A voice producing a sight. God spoke and some of them, instead of, even if they said they heard something like lightning, that is better, they saw. You can't hear God with your ears. You need to hear him with your spirit. Your spirit has been designed that way to hear him. When God speaks to your physical ears, you will melt. You will cease to exist. So you need to hear him with your spirit. You see? So another failure of Isaac, finally, this, you know, Rebecca came in and said, all right, Jacob, this is the day. Quick, get the animal. We are going to prepare for, for uh, the meal for him the way he like it because mommy know it. The way he like it and we are going to. Then the child brought out some important points. He said, mommy, my brother is hairy. I am smooth. What if I go and daddy touch me and find out that I'm not the one? I am going to, you know, attract curse upon myself instead of blessing. What did the mother say? Mother said, let that curse upon, come upon me. Mommy was ready to pay the price. What she was going to do, she was ready to pay the price. Anything that the outcome is going to be, she was ready to bear the, the cost. So she was like, you go. When your dad cares you, let the curse come upon me. I'll bear it. So they connive. They sought all possible means. The Bible said there was an old cloth of Esau in the house. Mommy, take it and put it on Jacob. What is that going to do? That is going to produce the smell on Jacob's, on Esau's body. Because he was a hunter. He was always with these bush animals. So he was smelling like them. You see? So mommy, take the cloth and put on him. He has taken care of the scent. Now, he was like, this animal you are killing, skin the animal with the hair. They put that one on the hand so that they will get... Ja Mommy is transforming Jacob into, you know, technology didn't start today. <laughs> so Mommy did her own plastic surgery and produced Esau in Jacob. The guy went in. Daddy tried all possible means. Now, maybe we should read it. Maybe we should read it. Maybe you should read it. Look at Genesis 27, verse 22. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hand are the hands of Esau. Mommy forgot about that. You see, she would have do throat surgery. <laughs> vocal cord surgery, you see, and make sure, but she, she, she forgot about that. She didn't tackle that one, but she was like, no problem. Don't worry. We will fix it. Verse 23, he did not recognize him for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he proceeded to bless him. As you really, sorry, are you really my son Esau? He asked. Isaac is asking again, are you really my son Esau? He asked. I am, he replied. Can you imagine by this time, Jacob's voice should have been breaking by now? Because that is really pushing him. He said, I am, he replied. Then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him and he ate and he brought some, some wine and he drank. So his father, Isaac, said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and he kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, wait, wait, wait. Look at something here. Isaac, why is Isaac trying to be sure that Jacob is the one being blessed? For many reasons. Number one, Isaac wants to be sure that the blessing 
doesn't go to a stranger. The blessing doesn't go to a stranger. Because the guy is blind now. Anybody can deceive him for the blessing. Everybody around knows that he is the career of the Abrahamic blessing. So everybody might have been looking forward to it. Number two, he is also playing a favoritism game here. He really, 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 really wants to bless his loved son. So that now that he is dying, but mommy will be around. So mommy will be for Jacob, but there will be nobody to support Isaac. Uh, sorry, nobody to support Esau. So he was going to use the blessing to support him. The blessing will provide for him. You see, if you are a blessed man, you don't need people. The blessing will, will do everything. The blessing will sustain you. You are going to see it. Now let's look at the content of the blessing. Everything worked. Jacob key in the code. Now the system responded, code accepted. So now Jacob is going to start downloading. Look at the words. He was like, ah. The smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. Do you know what he has done? He has blessed the job of Esau because he was a hunter. So by that word, he is pronouncing blessing upon the field on which he works. That means, look, if this blessing were to be truly pronounced upon Esau, the guy who became Bushmeat supplier worldwide. His city would have become center. Why bushmeat is distributed? Because when he goes, the animals will now run towards him. A blessed man. Now he don't need to go hunting them. They will run towards him. Because of him, the, the animals will not give birth one at one pregnancy. Every pregnancy goes like 10. Because of him. Well, let's read on. Verse 28, may God give you heaven's dew. Heaven's dew means, the dew means an anointing. It means may your life be wet all the time. Wet. You know what dew does, right? When dew falls at dawn or in the night, it waters the ground. The, the, it waters the ground. It makes the ground wet. It makes the plants wet so they can remain green. It creates some uh, humidity in the atmosphere, purifies the air, easy to breathe, moist for, 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 you know, for, for us to get a proper content of oxygen. So he said, may the Lord bless you with the dews of heaven. It means the anointing that makes you wet all the time. That means even in famine, you will be prosperous. No matter what is happening around you, you are not going to see the effect. While people are experiencing poverty, you will experience richness. You will not feel it. They say Corona, that is a history to you. You have to ask, how many people are this Corona really affecting? Because you don't know. You live in another world where Corona you know, news are not reported. So you have to come out and come and find out. They said people are dying of corona. Then they say, yes. People are like, oh, sorry for them. Then you go back to your world. Where you are, there is a dew of heaven. Always wet. Bible says when there is a cast down. He didn't say there will be lifting up. That's why people quote it. That's not what the Bible says. He said, then shall you say, you will say it. You will say it that there is a lifting up for you. So when it's like there is a cast down, you have to say it, that there is a lifting up for you. If you wait, it won't come. The lifting up won't come. He said, you will say it. When there is a cast down, Christians go like this. They are waiting for the Lord to, you know, they are waiting for, 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 for the Lord to lift them up. That's not what the scripture, he said, you will say it. 
there is corona outbreak. What did you say? What, what was your statement? You'd be like, ah, this thing is dangerous. Oh, it's killing everybody. The way Chinese are dying. What was your response? What did you say? What do you say in such crisis? What do you say? You'd be like, Father God, you told me in your word that thousands shall fall at my side, 10,000 at my right side, but it will not come near me. And that is the word I am holding on to. Corona may come close to you. It may even attack your clothes and tear the clothes. It will not get close to you. It doesn't matter how close it, it comes. Don't worry. You are out. So he said, may God give you the juice of, you know, give you heaven's dew and earth's riches. Go and read the, the life of the guy at the end of his life. Go and read it. The guy, Bible said he was rich in cattle, silver, gold, camel. Just name them. Those were the... Uh, uh, those were the assets. Those were the things they used to quantify prosperity in those days. He has all of them. He was rich, massively rich in all of them. And he just came from here, yeah, the blessing the Father pronounced upon him. The next one, abundance of grain and new wine. So the Lord gave you abundance of grain and new wine. You read from the King James, he said, I bless you with corn and wine. Corn means plenty, plenty of prosperity, abundance of prosperity, where everything you have is in excess. Oh, dear Lord. May nations serve you. Aha, this is the blessing of favoritism. Do you know the nation he's talking about? He's talking about his brother, Jacob, because he thought he was blessing Esau. So he was putting Jacob under him. May nations serve you and people bow down to you. May the Lord be, be Lord over your brothers. Aha! Be Lord over your brothers. So to him, Jacob is finally cast down. Esau is going to be Lord over him, not knowing he was making a mistake. And may the sons of your mother, eh, may the sons of your mother bow down to you. He is talking directly about Jacob. Bow down to Esau. May those who curse you be cursed. So he is not going to be around. In case mommy curse Esau, may she be cursed. In case Jacob opened his mouth against Esau, may he be cursed. All right? That's what he's doing. And those who bless you, be blessed. That means they have to be on your side. When you command, they have to go. After Isaac finished blessing him, this is another thing you have to see, the power of words. When he said, I bless you with heaven's dew, he didn't go, he didn't wait at dawn, fetch dew and come and pour on him. No, he didn't do that. When he said, I bless you with corn and wine, he didn't give him any, he didn't say, take this key, that door that I lock at the other side, open it, there is plenty of corn inside. And there is, uh, if you open the next one, there is one inside. No, that was not what he did. He didn't give him anything. He didn't give him anything. After Isaac finished blessing and Jacob had scarcely left his, his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. Then he, he said to him, my father, please sit up and eat some, some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, who are you? I am your son. He answered, your firstborn Esau. Isaac, Isaac trembled violently. Uh -uh. Watch that word. How is it in the King James? Isaac trembled. Very what is the word? Exceedingly. Very what? Exceedingly. Very exceedingly. Why did he tremble? I will tell you. 
But you see, that is a statement. It's enough for him to die. That feeling he felt is enough for him to just pass out. I'll explain it to you. Isaac trembled violently and said, who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate. I ate it just before you came in and I blessed him. Indeed, he will be blessed. In the King James, it says, yea, he shall be blessed. Indeed, he shall be blessed. That means the words Isaac spoke upon whoever, whether it's a stranger, whether it is Jacob, whether it is Ace, whoever those words were spoken upon, the person is blessed. Even if the person is not coming from the family line of Abraham, now he's still blessed. Now, let's look. That is not the reason why he was really, he trembled. Let's read more. Why is it? Um, which verse? 27, right? 34. No. 34. When Esau had heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightfully named Jacob? This is the second time he has taken advantage of me. He took my birthright and now he's taking my blessing. He didn't deceive him. He didn't took his birthright. He gave out his birthright. All right? He didn't deceive him. He gave it out. So what Jacob did was actually right. He did the right thing. The birthright legally belongs to him. If the father were to curse him, it, it wouldn't have worked because it legally belongs to him. He bought it. There was an exchange. You see, he bought the birthright with a plate of food. Can you imagine? A plate of food. There was an exchange. You see, when things happen, they don't need to be same equivalent. No. The most important thing is there is an exchange. Something is taken for it. There is an exchange. People of God, look, let me help you here. There are some things of yours. We don't sell it. If possible, don't sell your things. All right? If possible, don't sell your things. Especially to a close person to you, a friend or a sibling or uh, a family member. Especially that comes to demand the thing from you. Most of our parents did that. An uncle came from the city, was like, okay, I like this land of yours. Could you please sell it to me? They sold it. Took a little piece of money. Now the property is gone. That is their whole life. It's gone. but it is legal because the guy paid for it. There are things of yours. The moment you sell it, you are finished. You are finished. Be careful when you are selling your things. Be careful. Let's read on. Where are we? Verse 37. Isaac answered Esau, I have made him Lord over you, and I have made all his relatives his servants, and I have sustained. Past tense, sustained 
he said, I have made him, not I will make him. I have made him. When was he made? When those words were pronounced upon him. He was made. It's in the past. He was made to the point that he cannot be unmade. So he made him. Look at the words he's using. They are all in the past tense. And I have sustained him with corn and wine. He didn't say just corn and wine. New wine. That means fresh every day. Fresh every day. He sustained him with the latest car, not one car that you use for the rest of your life. The latest car. That means if they change the model, he will have money to buy it. And he has sustained him with this. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, do you have only one blessing? Uh -uh, is it not just words you spoke to him? Speak the same to me. Isn't he right? It's just words you spoke upon him. At least just repeat the same words upon, him, upon me. The same. So that's what Esau is trying to teach him. That it is true that you are old, but learn some sense. You have plenty, plenty blessing. Give me some too. Ah, you know, is it only one? You bless him and so what? You see, that statement alone proved that Jacob's Esau is truly an Esau. Because all this while he despised spiritual things, he doesn't have understanding of spiritual things. He saw the blessing just to be words. That was what he saw. He, just, he was just seeing words. So he was like, just speak the same thing upon me. <laughs> after all, you know, after all, we, I know you, Isaac, you don't have any corn. corn I mean, you, so if you are this corn you are talking about, I know you didn't give him any corn. In that, do you have any uh, wine anywhere? So that proved that truly, Esau has no idea about these spiritual things. In the New Testament, we are told that let there be no Esau among us. We shouldn't entertain Esau around, around us. Esau are people who don't take spiritual things seriously. Bible is warning you, don't entertain those people around you. They may be leaders, but as far as they don't take spiritual things seriously, don't entertain them around you. It's in the New Testament. People who easily give up on spiritual things. All right. Verse 39. All right, 38. Esau said to his father, do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, your dwelling, look at what he's now going to tell him. Your dwelling will be far away from the earth's richness. What did he tell the other one? May the Lord give you the earth's richness. That means everything has been given to Jacob. And any other person who is not Jacob, his dwelling place will be far away from it. Let's read on. Away from the earth's riches, away from the dew of heaven above. Uh oh, it was the same thing he told the other one, that the Lord gave it to him. So now that it has been given, already it has been given to him, this one's dwelling place will be far away from it. It means he won't enjoy of it. No matter how prosperous Jacob has become, there is no way Esau is going to enjoy of it. Let's read on. Then he said, you will, you will live by the sword. That means you have to work hard. You will continue to work hard. He blessed the field for his sake, yet he was not the one. So now he has to work. Hard work now if he's going to make it hard work. And you will serve your brother. Yes, he said so. He's telling him the result of the blessing, the effect of the blessing. How somebody's blessing is going to negatively affect him. Be careful, the people you associate yourself with. 
There are people who rise. When they rise, others fall. Have you heard of such people? There are people when they rise, others fall. Everybody is doing the same business until one funny guy came into the scene. Every other shop closed. Nobody is buying from the other shops. Everybody wants to buy from his shop. <laughs> one man is rising, others must suffer it. I learned the same thing happened in China. Chinese, most Chinese don't like Alibaba because when he came, all those funny, funny shops have to close down. Nobody was buying again. Everybody wants Alibaba shopping, online shopping. So the guy became a billionaire. All those shops that were there before he came, he collapsed all of them. He didn't take, he, look, he, did, he was not going around with padlock, locking people's containers, locking people's shops. He didn't do that. He was just rising. You see, he was just rising. And the rising automatically has the ability to destroy and crash anything on the way. That is what blessing does. It has the power to crash and destroy, melt into powder. Anything that blocks it, anything that stands in the way. That is what blessing does. When they tell you kings are coming to your rising, you didn't get it. Kings are coming to my rising. Kings are coming. I am showing up. You see, I am showing up. And that's what you should say as a minister of God. You tell yourself, I am showing up with the right gospel, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. All false prophets will, be, will begin to go down. I am not going to any church and go and preach any message for people to come to my church. I will just keep rising. Keep rising. Just keep rising automatically people will start running away from those churches and come, uh, start coming to your church. You, do you have a shop? Rise with your shop. Rise with your... Look, they may go to work 4 a.m. You will come and open your shop 10 a.m. and there are people lined up waiting for you to open so they can buy. That's what the anointing does. You see, many children of God, we don't even know we are anointed. We don't know. We don't know. Tell yourself, Look, those days I used to tell my, even if they put me in hell, I will prosper. Nobody ever prosper in hell. If you take me there, I will prosper in hell. And since nobody is allowed to prosper in hell, then I, I will not be taken there. Even if I qualify for hell, they won't take me there. Because I will abuse the laws of hell. I will prosper there. You see, anywhere you put it, you just, it just proves that you are truly a child of God. I can Hell? If I get to hell, peace will come there. And we don't need peace in hell, so they won't take me there. We don't need peace in hell. Yet some of us, when they take us there, they will be hey. peace. People of God, let me tell you something. When you get to a place and they reject you, don't uh. worry. Get back and prepare mm. very well. Mm. You see, when you, you show up and they reject you, it means your mm. preparation is not good. You didn't show up well. Go backstage. Repolish mm. your face. Kabarush. You know, put the colors well. Put it the is. lipstick now. You know, hey. put the, how do you call them? The foundation, the post. Do it well now. Aye. Comb your hair. Hey. Comb your hair, you know. I'm here. Comb your beard. Comb it hey. downwards. Comb hey. it and come out now. <laughs> They'll be like, we want this one. The same guy they rejected. They'll not be like, we want this one. Oh, yeah. You may even be standing far behind. They oh, will yeah. look through. They will keep, say, I want that no. one. Everybody will be pointing me. They said, no, that <laughs> one. Everybody will be pointing me. And you know they are talking <laughs> about you. And so the guy will now stand up and say, hey, I want, I said, I'm talking about you. <laughs> People of God, oh, when no. you go to an interview uh, and they reject you, uh, maybe. If only you are not blessed, if they uh, reject you, turn to the interviewers, turn to them <laughs> and tell them, if you want this company to be in existence, the next five years, employ me. <laughs> if you want this company to be in existence, the next, because <laughs> when you get out of that room, you are going to rise and Glory. your rising will collapse that company. Glory. You buy it from so them. to be on the hey. safer side, if they want this uh. company, and when they say, why did you talk like that? Tell them you need me in this company. 
for it to survive the next five years. No. Children of God, we don't know who we are. You see, the moment you lost your identity, anything starts working against you. We are people of blessing. We have the blessing of God in our, in our spirit. And the blessing has the ability to, look, Bible said it will crush it into powder. <laughs> to dust. <laughs> Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible said the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. People hey. always misunderstand this verse. The Bible didn't say you are going to destroy the yoke because of the anointing on you. That is effort. Bible didn't put it like that. He said the yoke shall be destroyed. It means hey. if you fold your hands and you are standing and they put the yoke on you, it will just break. Because of the anointing. It will just break. Maybe, maybe you just had a dream and you saw people gathered and they were taking bad decisions about you. When you wake up, drink water and go back to sleep. Don't bother. Don't even pray. Don't even pray. Don't bother yourself. You say, I am a blessed man. You see, I'm a blessed man. You are newly employed at a place. When you get there, stand at the gates or the entrance of wherever you are employed. Mm. Tell them, Father God, I came here to do your will, O oh Lord. Hey, La and from today, I seize the authority hey. for anybody to, to, to dismiss or, or whatever they call it. Seize that authority. People, look, we have the power to give authority and we have the power to seize authority. Mm. I told you before, when I step in China, That's my before right. I get off the plane, I told, I, at the entrance of the flight, I look towards China. And I'm like, I, I spoke those words that I seize the authority for any police hey. to arrest me. Even if I am wrong, no police has the right. <laughs> I seize the right, the right. I am That's not saying they are not police. No. They should be police. But the right to arrest me, I took mm. it from mm. them. Yeah. In China, I was That's interrogated by police. Judgment. At least three times. Three times I was interrogated ah. by police. But you see, they could have, but they didn't have the right. They lack the ability. Every time that shall arise They lack the ability. That is the word. Mm. When you right. get to a company, say, Father God, I seize the ability to fire me. It means even if you misbehave, they don't have the right to fire you. Mm. I seize it. Yeah. I seize Look, look at Elijah. The guy sees the ability to reign for three years. <laughs> he has the key. <laughs> he locked good. the door hey, of rain. Yeah. The guy locked the door of rain and put the key in his hey. pocket. I said, nonsense. Next time. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't God. <laughs> look, oh, he, yeah. look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The guy even sees the ability from God. Not even God has the right. He said, at, at my work. <laughs> People were praying in that same city to God, but God didn't have the key. The key is in the guy's pocket. Why did he hear them? <laughs> he didn't have the authority. <laughs> yes, God was hearing them, but he was like, sorry, sir, I can't do anything about it. The key is with that funny guy. Yeah. Oh, glory. <laughs> Oh, I understand. <laughs> People were praying to the point that the king got to know about it. Mm. He was That's... like, is that what is happening in the city? They okay. said, yes, sir. People are already eating their children out of <laughs> hunger. They said, yes, sir. He was like, but where is the prophet? <laughs> what are the men of God in the land? Oh, mm -hmm. people of God, the men of God were praying. <laughs> but one thing they forgot that it was they forgot that the key was not even with God <laughs> heaven was closed <laughs> the guy closed heaven and put the key in his pocket oh, and he said until at, the, at my word will it rain in this land at my word oh. 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 he should have just locked it and go so, oh. so that means God has the right to it God could also cause rain God <laughs> wanted to God wanted to but when you look around the key is not in the door <laughs> If he died, <laughs> he uh, if died. he died, that means it will never rain in that land. <laughs> it wouldn't have rain in that land again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Elijah who is who was not born again. 
Old Testament. He was not born again. <laughs> Old Testament. How much okay. more you in the New Testament? You can do better. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. You are there. One funny institution is disturbing. One funny guy is worrying you. One, you don't know, some. Look, seize the authority. Seize the authority. Seize the authority. Hallelujah. Seize the authority. Have the power in your hands. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, boy. I was sent to go and do attachment in a hospital. I got them uh, like, Father God, I am here. Hey. In this hospital, for the next hey. one year, no, I then. will do what I like. Hey. I am not here to abide. I came with my own hey. environment, my own authority, my own power. I will come to work when I like, and I will leave when I like. Hey. And it is so. And my way. Hey. It is so. For the past one week, I didn't go to work. Nobody even called. Oh, you are not coming. Ready. Nobody called. I gave myself two weeks holiday before. <laughs> I can you take know. one month. You, don't have you know, right. sometimes you hear things like this and you go like, oh, you know, well, continue to pity the environment. Me, I am not, I am there to exercise authority. Alabama. Oh. Alabama. Jesus said all you. power in heaven on Alabama. earth Alabama. and under the earth Alabama. has been given to me. Alabama. He said, go ye therefore. He cannot mm. tell you to go if he didn't give you the same authority. Hey, yeah. He said, go ye therefore and do the same. And he oh, said, cast yeah. out devils. Raise Come the dead. Seize authority. Raise the dead. He is not talking about dead bodies. He is talking about challenges and circumstances. He is talking about systems and environments. Mm. Even now, I'm considering, I have two more months in that hospital. They said there's, I'm considering I'll end the, the whole attachment now. Hey. 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 I'm thinking about it. Uh, you are reasoning it out. <laughs> when you got to your university, what did you say? Maybe you didn't say anything. That's why things are going hey. the way they are going. Hey, Alamado. Oh, dear. Maybe you didn't say anything. That's why I think you have been assigned a professor. What did you say to that on un, uh, that uh, you know unbeliever professor? What did you say to him? Hey. It was time for my thesis. They gave me one funny guy. I just hmm. said in my mind, I'm a man of freedom. No professor has the right to call me while I'm sleeping to come to the lab. Oh, yes. <laughs> Interestingly, oh, some of you I was staying with you. Interestingly, I have never seen any, when I text my professor that I'm even tired, I want to come to the lab. And he said, you see, I'm not around. <laughs> you guys, you, you know, oh, it's just fine. So it got it's to the time I was now tired. I want to go now. <laughs> I never saw my professor a week for us to go and defend our thesis. That was the time he, he responded to me. And he came back because of me, because he has to give me some things to go and defend. <laughs> defend thesis. When I know the origin of the earth, I should come and defend thesis. <laughs> oh, that kind of God and joke. Is it job? You, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand the word of God. <laughs> Look, the ultimate of science, the ultimate purpose of science is to find the origin of life. We know the origin of life from Sunday school. So it means what science is struggling to know is you, you know it from Sunday school. They can't ask you to come and defend. So people, that authority. So look, look at it here. The guy just spoke words upon the sun. And it is done. And the words he spoke, they are irreversible. Okay, let me use the next time to show you the effect of the blessing in this guy's life. I feel like preaching now. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, moments like this, when you are charged up like this, you open uh. your door and you curse. You just curse something. If you see a tree there, <laughs> curse that tree. Hey! Just curse that one. Hey! Curse that oh. one. You see, moments like this, when we are charged with anointing, I look around oh, and I see you and I, and I show you words. Hey. You could be blessed. You could be destroyed. Hey. Hey. We've been given power from Paran. on high. No system has the right to suppress you. 
Mm-hmm. I was born a free man. Ever since I gave my life <laughs> to Christ, <laughs> I broke loose of every bandage. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed my university life. I won't lie to you. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Univers- I can't remember even one day, I, they have to call me from the blanket that there is exam. They are writing exam. They have to call me from the blanket. <laughs> I woke up now, speed in the winter. Where am I going to write it? <laughs> I got there. They were all done. Everybody is done. What now give me the paper. I, I, I sat there not knowing what to do. Well, I wrote what I think is right. So I gave, gave to the teacher. It came, we all passed. They wrote, me. I didn't write anything. We all passed anyway. You know. <laughs> oh, there was a man sent from God. <laughs> One thing. One thing mm. wisdom does for you is yes, if wisdom costs you to write, even if it is wrong, it is right. Mm. <laughs> if wisdom costs you to write, ah. your divination will be accepted as the best. Amen. Oh, throughout my universe, I was conscious of the life I carried. We are blessed people, you know. So these guys sought it badly and couldn't get it. So verse 41. Mm. Okay, let's let's read. Let's look at verse 40. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. He's not cursing him. People of God, he's not cursing him. He's telling him the effect of Jacob's rising. The effect of Jacob's rising is going to crash Esau down. Now let's read on. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke off your neck. 41. Esau had a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, the days of, the days of mourning for my father is near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. He said, we are going to bury Jacob and Isaac on the same day. <laughs> when this guy will die in peace I'll add my brother to it so he will kill him when Rebecca was told who told him? Isaac so because he made that promise in the presence of Isaac Isaac told Rebecca I was like well Wahala is here <laughs> our children are going to kill each other so he's like okay when Rebecca was told what her elder son, Esau, had said, she sent for her younger son, Jacob, and said to him, your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. <laughs> Flee at once to my brother, Laban, in Haran, another mistake of Rebekah. The blessing, the words Isaac spoke upon Jacob didn't fully come, you know, it didn't really manifest because of the direction the mother gave him. Oh, dear Lord. 44. Stay with him for a while until your brother, until your brother's fairies subside. When your brother is no longer angry with you, and forget what he did, what you did to him. I will send you words so you come back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Uh-uh. How is, is she going to lose both of them? That means if Esau killed Jacob, mommy will kill Esau. So he has, he has to lose both of them on the same day. If you kill my boy, I kill you. By then, Isaac is, die, is dead. So the whole family is going, except uh, Rebecca. Rebecca will be left alone. And the so Isaac gone. died by himself, and his death was an appointed time for Esau to kill Jacob. And it's the same appointed time for Rebecca to kill Esau. Maybe after killing him, she may kill herself, so the family is gone. So she was like, I can't lose both of you on the same, uh, on the same day. Because when he kills you, I, I'll kill him. <laughs> so you run away. You run away. 46. Then Rebecca said to Isaac, I am disgusted 
with living because of these Hittite women. If Jacob take a wife from among the women of this land, from Hittite women like this, my life will not be worth living. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what, what do you see here? She is giving a good guidance, a good direction to the husband that our son, Jacob, shouldn't marry from among the, the Hittites, you know, the, 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 the foreigners among whom they were living. You know what Abraham did for Isaac, right? But yes, Isaac was not ready to do it for, for their children. Can you imagine? He's about to die. Isaac is about to die and he didn't bother about their marriage life. He didn't bother. So the woman brought the suggestion. Already, Jake, uh, Esau is already married to one of these Hittite women. Mm. Not even one. He, he, by this time, he was already married to two or even three of them. Let me show you. Let me show you. Go to the next verse. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him. A, a extra blessing upon blessing. Bible says what? Grace upon grace. It means grace heaped <coughs> upon grace. Extra blessing. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him. Then he commanded him, do not marry a Canaanite woman. That sense has to be pushed into his head by Rebecca. Go at once to Padan Aram, to the house of your mother's father, Beth Bethuel. Take a wife for, listen to what is happening here. Take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban. Is that not the same man mommy said Jacob to, should run to? Mommy went to present the case in such a way that daddy would agree to the runaway of Jacob. So she came and said, you know, I am not happy when these Canaanite women, when they come from marry from here, I will die. I will kill myself. <laughs> In fact, I will kill myself. I will kill myself. So what did he say? <laughs> Isaac was, so what do you suggest? He said, I want him. I want him to marry from, from Laban. 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 <laughs> Where <Well>, I was born. <laughs> My husband is no worse now. <laughs> So she went to present the whole thing so that daddy would agree for the guy to run away. Daddy really didn't really get a trick. He didn't catch it. He agreed. So he brought the same thing as though he was the one who is speaking. But that is mommy speaking through daddy. He said, now go to the house of Laban, your mother's brother. Uh -uh. Why didn't he say my brother, my family? Go to the house of Abraham, your mother's after all, they are from the same family, so it's okay. Hmm. May God Almighty bless you. Another form of blessing here. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your number until you become a community of people. What is happening here? What is happening here? Transfer of the Abrahamic blessing upon hmm. Jacob. Those are the things God spoke to Abraham that your children will multiply and you will inherit the land. The first blessing, it wasn't included. So listen here, look at it. Uh, so you become people of community. May he give you, may he, he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land. You get it now? So he's transferring the land to Jacob. The land where you now reside as a foreigner. The same thing God spoke to Abraham. And the same thing Abraham spoke to Isaac. Isaac is transferring it to Jacob. All right? Yes, so that you may take possession of the land where you reside now as a foreigner. The land God, the land God gave to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way and he went to Padan Aram, to Laban, son of Bethel, the Aramean, and brother of Rebekah, who was the mother of Jacob and Esau. Now, Esau learned, listen to something here. Esau learned that Isaac <laughs> had blessed Jacob and uh, had sent him to Padan Aram to take a wife from there. And there, when, and when he blessed him, he commanded him, do not marry 
a Canaanite woman. And thus Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Padan Aram. Esau then realized how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father Isaac. When Esau was about to marry, daddy spoke about it, that don't marry these foreigners. Esau disobeyed. Mm. Esau disobeyed. I know the whole story. You know, I read it from, from some other places. I know the whole story. What happened? By this time, he's married to two or I think three wives already. Yes. When daddy was not happy with what he did, he mm. married another one on top. First, he married one. When mommy and daddy were upset about it, they were talking about the issue. Look, mm. when he saw that they were really angry, he brought another one home. Who is this one? He said, the next wife, a new one. Who is she? A Hittite. Mm. Anytime he gets angry, he marry one <laughs> to add to it. That was what he was doing. <laughs> because that is what daddy and mommy hate. So that was what he was going to do against them. Bible said the life of Esau was a smear on the body of their, of their parents. That means his life was not pleasing. They were never, his life was a bitter hair in their mouth. Mm. There are people, the moment we say, you know, you say something that they shouldn't do, because you said it, that is the reason why they are going to do it. They wouldn't have do it if you were not to say it, but because you said it, that is the reason why they are not going to do it. That is an Esau. So this particular time, they educated him not to marry these women. When he got angry, he married one. When they talk about it, he added one. So now when he saw that his junior brother has obeyed the voice of their parents, that was when it dawned on him that these people are really displeasing to their to their, to their parents. He now regret the whole thing. That, wow, is this serious? Is it this serious? Now look at his next action. Let's read. I, I like the word of God. Which verse are we? Verse 9. Verse nine. Look at verse 9. So he, who is the he? Esau. He went mm. to Ishmael. Ah, uh -uh, the wrong place again. Ishmael. He now went to Ishmael and married my forever. Mahala from there, the sister of whoever, the daughter of Ishmael, son of Abraham, in addition to the wives <laughs> he already had. So in response to what the father has done, blessing the guy and sending him away, he's going to bring another trouble. This just that this time it will be a little close. <laughs> Yes, after all, is Ishmael not your own brother? <laughs> but it proved again that Esau was truly an Esau. He just saw that they are brothers, but he didn't consider the spiritual aspect of their existence. But that was not what daddy said. Daddy said, marry from my family. He now went to Ishmael's family. It's after all, are we not from the same Abraham? Esau's used their carnal understanding to interpret spiritual things. That is what Esau's do. They use their carnal understanding to interpret spiritual things. That is why it always leads into disaster. So he sat down, he was like, yeah, this can't be really displeasing to my father. But so let me just go. After all, is it not the same family? Now let me go for Ishmael. Ishmael's family. He was right. He was right. But you see, he was looking at the whole thing from the carnal point of view. Before they were born, God said something. Till today, Bible scholars don't know how to interpret it. God said, Esau I hate. And Jacob I love. And people... Not because just look at him when he was a baby. No, God was already seeing into the future. 
he saw the guy's life, how his whole life is going to just be a mess. He said, I hate Jacob. I hate, J I hate Esau. But when you look at the life of Jacob, he said, Jacob, I love. You know, Bible scholars say, well, that statement really mean God has the power to, for, for who he will like and who he will hate. No, <laughs> that is not the reason. That's not the reason. So he went to bring one more to come and add to it. Now already you see they are tired of, of this his life. So when he brought it this time, nobody mind him. Nobody didn't say anything. This time they are tired now. They, they wouldn't talk. Because if you talk about it, you will go and marry another hate woman to come and add to it. So this time nobody, everybody decided not to mind him. There are people like that. When you, 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 you tell them something, you know, they should, you warn them about something. The moment they get upset with you, the very thing you warn them about is the one they are going to do. And they are doing it in punishment to you. They don't know it's about them. They thought they are punishing you. That thing you said they shouldn't do, they think it's about you. So they will do it. Look, spiritual instructions are very simple, but disobeying them costs you a lot. You see, disobeying them costs you a lot. Spiritual instructions, they come in simple ways. They, they don't look great, but there is a massive blessing behind it. Same way, there's a massive distraction behind it. There are some of you even in the call now. Your conscience and your spirit even your common sense bear you witness that there is a need for you to open your camera, prepare, sit upright, and receive the word of God. But no, you won't because I said it. So you think, oh, I'm not giving this guy my face. You think you are doing me. I told you before from the beginning, I don't need your face to preach to you. If everybody closed their camera, I can still preach. And the message you hear everything I'm hearing, you are hearing now. One day is the land, and oh. Hallelujah. Hello. All right. Yeah, so that's spiritual things. They, they come in simple instructions. You obey it, you get blessed. If you disobey it, it goes against you. There are some of you, for you to open your camera, you'd rather die. You'd rather die. These things are not new. They are not new. God has seen people like you before. He has. He has seen a lot, a lot of your type before. At least it, Jacob alone is enough. People who don't res respond to spiritual things because somebody said it. So they told this guy that don't marry the Canaanite women. When he realized, do you know what he said? He was like, after all, my blessing has been given to my brother. What am I living for? What am I living for? He went ahead and married. He don't know it was about him. He would have still been blessed because he was still the seed of Abraham. You see how marriage cuts them completely off the blessing of God. Last time I told you, if you study the life of these people, none of them, their firstborn inherited the blessing. None of them. Abraham, Ishmael would inherit it. Due to the mistake Abraham made, 
he wouldn't. It comes to Isaac, the same thing. The firstborn who is legally entitled to the uh, birthright wouldn't inherit it. Go and study the life of this same Jacob, his 12 children. The first one is Reuben. He cursed. Instead of blessing the guy inheriting the, the blessing, he rather received curse because he slept with the girlfriend of the father. So the father cursed him instead of blessing him. The father cursed him. None of them take it all the way to David. The same thing. Solomon, he, for Solomon, he even destroyed the kingdom. The children of Solomon doesn't even need to be given to us. Same repeated mistake. Same repeated mistake. As I'm talking to you now, maybe if you look in your family, you will notice a trend of mistake. You will. You will notice it, a trend of mistake. Following everybody. Everybody felt the same place. What are you doing about it? Remember, these are people attached to Abraham. They are blessed, but their mistakes had the power to sway them off the blessing. Look, look back. You can take a few minutes. Look back in your family. You will see the same repeated mistake of everybody. You don't sit down and just keep quiet. You should be careful. You know, they just bring babies home. They don't marry. Do they care? They don't care. They don't. You will see. Just look. Just look back. Just look back. Not too far away. Look at the life of your parents. Sometimes you can see where the failure is. And you'll notice that it is peculiar to the family. There are families, they struggle before they marry. Not even only the ladies, even the guys. And if they finally hit it, at most three months, it has to come to an end. When you notice this, what are you doing about it? Some say, I'm really praying. Hey, I'm really praying about it. You are making the mistake already. He doesn't need prayer. He doesn't. It needs firm decision. Firm decision. Believe in yourself. If you are able to break that trend, you have changed the life of the whole family. You talk about my family, you will not even see a committed Christian as to even be seen a pastor. They worship God the way they, they like. Or why? Because they don't even know him. When it comes to my turn, I thought I am not going to be a committed, a committed Christian just alone. I won't just be committed. I will take it further. plan through your family line, you are now going to produce ministers of the gospel. Your children, from you, you will change the history of the family. You can plan it. It has to do with your decisions, your choice of partner. Very important. You marry like Esau did. Wahala for you.
we have nine more minutes. Let's let's try to get out of this. So Jacob's dream. So Jacob on his way. Now I'll narrate now. On his way to uh, Padam Aram, on his way, since it was days of journey, he has to walk for many days to get there. On his way, he got tired, slept. Then he had a dream. And he saw a ladder connecting from the earth to heaven. And he saw the Lord standing at the top of the ladder. And the Lord gave him a message. Maybe we should just read some part of it. Mm, the dream is not very important. Let's look at verse 16. Genesis 28, verse lifted up his physical eyes just like uh, what's the name of that guy lot lot did he lifted up his physical eyes and he was like well you got a flower in your house if only you give this daughter to me let me save you no salary no pay no allowance nothing for seven years then you give me your daughter rachel to marry this guy, Laban, was like, wow, incredible. He was like, okay. So the guy served for seven years. That night, the night, Rachel will be given to, to Jacob. If you read the story, he said, give her to me so I may make love to her. That was, an interest. That was his interest. Because the guy starved himself for seven years. Now it's time. He wouldn't take time. He wouldn't exercise patience. That night, he said, "You give, look, give, please. I'm losing patience now. Give, 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 give me." They was like, they were like, "You get inside. You get inside." Interestingly, interestingly, why Jacob was, he could not speak their language. He could not speak their language. So they asked him to get in and they will get the lady for, for him. It was in the night. So they cover uh, Leah, uh, Leah the, the firstborn, the first daughter. They cover her face and the women were singing behind Leah. You know, this guy is going to make mistake. Yeah, yo. He's going to make me speak. Yeah, yo, 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 yeah, yo. Since he cannot understand their language, he was just dancing to the song. You know, he was just enjoying himself. For seven years. Seven years. And then he was dancing to his own mistake. Oh, another man will leave. He's going to make mistake. Yeah, yo, 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 yo. He was just dancing, you know, just having nice time. Nice time. All oh, he was interested in by 9 p.m. tonight, I, I'll, I'll be fine. I, I, I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Excited. Excited. They let him in. And they let him in. Finally, this young lady got in. Jacob has been with this family for seven years. For seven years, even the smell of Leah, you should know the smell. 
even if it is Rachel you, you, you love, at least you should know that this is not the one. <laughs> Jacob went ahead, made love to Leah throughout the night. <laughs> now like wake Isaac. up, <laughs> see the face, and say, ah, you, but you deceive me. Like, what happened? I, I, I think even, even if it is the darkness in hell, because this time you don't need light. <laughs> you should still be able to record. I don't know what happened. His mind is dark. <laughs> like, you, you know, look at Genesis 29, verse 21. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. My time is completed. I want to make love to her. So Laban brought together all the people of the place. They are the one going to do the singing. <laughs> and gave a feast. They celebrated him. <laughs> but when evening came, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. And Jacob made love to her. And Laban gave his servants Zilpah to his daughter as her attendant. You know, this same servant later became his wife as well. Hmm. When morning came, there, there was Leah. So a boy woke up in the night, in the morning now, saw wifey behind him only to realize he was giving the wrong person. So Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? I saved you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Laban replied, it is not our custom. You stay with the people seven years and you still didn't know their custom. He didn't learn their language. He didn't, like, nothing. Nothing. He didn't know their custom. That you don't marry the younger one when the elder one is not yet married. I know, I know some communities still have the same culture today. He didn't know it, seven years. And the community know he is serving for, for Rachel. They were just like big fool. <laughs> so you know, there's the, the rest of the story. The uncle was like, look, if you really want Rachel, you have to serve another seven years. But this time, he was going to be giving credit card. You are going to marry her. You, you marry her right now. You are going to have her as your wife. But the next seven years, you are going to work for free. And the guy agreed. That should tell you how much he loved this Rachel. You, you read from the beginning, the Bible described both of them. Rachel was very beautiful. Uh, Leah has, uh, you know, the eyes were look me down. You know look me down? When the guy is looking here, but actually he's looking here. Look me down. Look me down. <laughs> it means when he's looking here, in reality, the guy is looking here. So such a person, when he's looking at you, you won't know. Oh, yeah. You won't know. <laughs> when you are there and you are stealing at such a person's place, how are you going to do it? <laughs> the guy's eyes is on you, yet he's not looking at you. When his eyes are off, when you think he's not looking at you, that is exactly when he's looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Jacob doesn't want, he doesn't want any trouble. So he said, you give me the younger one. After all, that one is fair and beautiful. You give her to me. Fair women, you know. Mm. So now, uh, finally, he, he, so they gave him both, both ladies and he has to work another seven years for, for them. There is something unique about the wives of all these people. The moment they get married to the career of the blessing, their womb close, they don't give birth. It happened to Sarah. Mm -hmm. Happened to Rebecca. Mm -hmm. It happened to Rachel. Because throughout the, 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 this thing, even it happened to Leah. God favored Leah to open Leah's womb 
because the husband doesn't really love him. The husband wasn't really nice to him. So in order for God to just make it up for him, he opened her womb. But there is just that, that thing about them. Anybody married to these people, the careers of the blessing, their womb closed. Someone said, Pastor, why? See me backstage with Hombao, and I will explain it to you why. All right, sir. I'm going to say, you know, this is what we are saying. Pastors of this, <laughs> nowadays, they like money too much. They like money. <laughs> <laughs> keep your money and let me keep my knowledge Very soon, my, I'll use my knowledge to come and buy your money <laughs> use knowledge to buy money yeah I'll use my knowledge to come and buy your money <laughs> so what is happening here let's do some analysis here trace of mistake this guy left his father's house blessed mm. so blessed but do you know something Laban was the man who was enjoying the blessing. The yeah. fact that the guy was connected to the uncle, the, the moment he stepped into the uncle's house, everything changed. Everything changed. The animals that were not giving birth before, they started giving birth, not to one, to many at a go. Those ones that were suffering from kwashiorkor, they now receive money, uh, you know, they now receive, you know, uh, ability to grow. They were obese now. The skeletons were put in on flesh. Why? Because a blessed man has yeah. stepped into the house. He wasn't giving them anything special that Laban was not giving them before. He was taking them to the same place. Same thing. What is making the difference now? The anointing. The blessing. The blessing. People of God, you, see, you have to be mindful of blessing. It makes life easier no struggle, yet everything fall in place. That anointing makes the difference. The anointing, same place, same feeding. Everything changed. The uncle is the one enjoying the blessing. For 14 years, he wasted the blessing for 14 years. That is just the beginning of it all. But let me reverse back. Now that the effect of this is Mommy, now that mommy connived with Jacob for him mm. to run away, the day he ran out of the house was the last time he saw him. That is the price to pay. Because. All these things she was working for so hard, she wouldn't leave to enjoy it. That was the last time. The family broke. Esau found himself somewhere. If you read the life of Esau, when he, when he felt bored, he married a Canaanite woman. When he felt bored, he married. That is how his life was. <laughs> when he lost appetite, he would marry. He would just marry. He was just rascal. Like, his life was just something else. In response to what the father said that he, they shouldn't marry from there. Mommy has to dearly pay for it never to see Jacob again. Are these things peculiar to Isaac, Jacob, and, and Esau, and, and Rebecca? No. They are life stories. This is how life is. When we finish studying these things, people of God, take time to read it. God will relate the message now to your personal life. We are many. You see, in the corner, we are mean. Until you study, that is where God will open your eyes. Then you will see how the story is related to your life. The question is, why is this message coming to you at this age of your life? Why didn't you hear it? The details of this thing when you were in Sunday school is not needed. Why is it coming at this time? Are you at the edge of making the same mistake and God wants to save you? Maybe yes. But you see, by the time you close this meeting, you, you, the moment you close your Bible, the next time you open it, it's still at Genesis, wherever we left it. That is the same place you will see that will open. Study it for yourself. 
These are life stories. It's not peculiar to this family. They are life principles. They are life principles. The Isaac that bless, the Isaac that bless, you know, thinking he would rather die. He was about to die. They all died later. They have to wait to enjoy the heat that they have created. Esau kept marrying these Canaanite women as a heartbreak to their parents. So there is nothing you will do and think, oh, I'm really free. No, <laughs> it's ahead. It's ahead. So you know the story. Jacob ended up marrying four, four wives. As a seed of Abraham, he, he should have married one. But now he married two and then had two servants on top. Four. Four. God has to intervene. But you see, the good thing was he was a blessed man. That was what made all the difference. Jacob's life would have been worse than any other character in the whole Bible. But thank God for the blessing. You know the story. Finally, he went to wrestle with God. That was when he restored the blessing back. He went to wrestle with God. That was when he restored the blessing back. Thank God for that opportunity to wrestle with God. Thank God for that opportunity to wrestle with God. But God just gave him that opportunity so that his blessing and the promise he made, he made to Abraham can come to pass. Some of you, you see, God is doing all these things for you because of the righteousness of your mother or the righteousness of your father. God is rewarding you. The reward is coming to you. Maybe they struggled many years back to know God, but anyhow, they couldn't know him. And now God wants to reveal himself, the desire of your parents. God is fulfilling it in you that you will know him. It could be. And this thing, how would you know? How would you know? You might not know until you make the mistake. Then you will realize everything in a twinkle of an eye. You realize it now. So watch your decisions. You see, study from these guys. Learn. Apply it to your life. Apply it to your life. Yesterday, you know, that men's conference, somebody asked a, a question, can you marry an, an unbeliever? He is, he is in a relationship with an unbeliever. You see, it's because it's a new fellowship. I was visiting them for the first time. When you ask such a question, I should have just replied, may God forgive you. That is the answer. May God forgive you. Only God knows how somebody struggles to bring God into his family. Now he's taking God out of it now. Married to an unbeliever. Who knows? The same story trend is playing in his life. Satan trapped him. Satan trapped him. And he don't know. He's in love. That's the only thing he was interested in. Like how this guy was interested in he wants to make love to the point that he, made, he was making mistake and wouldn't recognize it. Carnal focus. When the focus is on the carnal thing, he has to pay another extra seven years for the little patient he should have exercised. Seven years. At most, a night. How long is a night? Let's even take it 12 hours. A patient for 12 hours, he has to pay seven years in exchange. 
seven years with sorrow and pain. A little more exercise. A, a, a patient, he has to exercise. And maybe you are also doing something that God is, or you are planning to take a decision. That God is warning you, he's talking to you about it. But you, you are like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you won't listen. Any question? We have to end it here. We are not moving fast. Ah, ah, just Genesis 29. Why? I'm in hurry to complete Genesis. This Genesis is becoming slow. But I think it, it, it's worth it. It's okay. It's okay. Any question, open your mic and ask your question quick and let's close. Any question? Any, any clarification? Yes, yes, Pastor, I have a question. Who is talking? Answer is a... Was your camera open? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead and ask. Uh, my question is, for the fact that uh, Jacob was aware of the, of the benefits of the birthright and Esau wasn't, why is it we can't say that is deceiving? Who was aware? Jacob was aware. Yeah, the benefit of it, because you said that uh, Rebecca taught Jacob on the bed, right? Why, mm -hmm. why Isaac wasn't able to do the same to Esau? Mm -hmm. So that justifies it to make it a, a, a deception? Is that what you want to know? Yeah, you said that uh, Jacob didn't deceive Esau, so I'm I'm asking why is it we can't say it wasn't a deception because Jacob was fully aware of the benefit of the bed, right? Why Esau wasn't? Well, you see, your ignorance doesn't justify your, your mistakes. You see, the fact that you are ignorant of something doesn't justify your mistakes. So, the best way to solve the problem is, is don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant. He didn't deceive him. I told you, number one, it's a mistake from his father. You see, the father didn't educate the son about it. But mommy did. Was it the right thing mommy was supposed to do? No. He was not the, the elderly one. He was not the, the one to be educated about bed right. It should have been the other one. But now that she's also on the side of the younger one, ah, that is what was supposed to happen. So uh, a source ignorance doesn't justify. Remember, there are spiritual laws also in place here. You see, so God is responsible. God is involved. There are spiritual laws. The birthright has a law, a spiritual law backing it. That is why it works for anybody on which, on whom it is pronounced. There's a law back in it. For that law not to be abused, the right thing has to be done. So he was just ignorant of it. He was just ignorant of it. I, I think definitely Jacob knew something little about the birthright. Because these are things, even if nobody taught you about it, children around you, your friends, kids, you hear them talking about things like this. You hear them boasting, I am the firstborn and I'm going to inherit the birthright. And then some might have also said, yeah, 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 I am also a firstborn and I'm also going to inherit. But he thought he could just speak those words and have it back. He, he, he might have even known about it. He just thought he was rather deceiving the brother. He was swearing the wrong oath to the brother. That was what he thought he was doing. He was rather playing a smart game. For he just changed those words and not knowing the words are really in effect. If Esau's words wouldn't work, then Isaac's blessings shouldn't work. That is how it is. 
There are people who speak negatively and they expect it not to take any effect in their lives. But they want a man of God to say, God bless you, and something happened. It doesn't work that way. Any other question? Thank you, sir. Yeah, well, even if you haven't opened your camera, ask your question. If you have a, a question, ask. Be quick and let's close. Ask your question. Don't keep your question and go and make the same mistake. No question. Be close. Don't text me backstage. <laughs> I'll pronounce curse. Anybody who do, I'll pronounce curse upon you. So don't text me backstage. Ask your question here. If it is private, send private message. You know how to do it. Click on the all the people, tap my name, and before you type the question. Someone say, ah, I know my camera is open. When I type in, they will know I'm the one asking. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Brother Daniel, you are welcome. And thank you so much for yesterday.